universe of the world. From this time inside, I found the Jewish countries, about Egypt, and south of the west. But eventually, when they did come, Good morning and welcome. My name is Ori and I'm here with someone very important to discuss the origin of Elbubu. Considering the stance that a lot of us have lost touch with our place, our people and our culture, we are taking our time to bring this to you so you can connect with your roots. And this morning we are with the incredible Shiv Gabriel Agua. Good morning, sir. Good morning, my child. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm very well. So, Daddy, I very Naimari. What the Ehubo people are made up of? Our origin, to be precise. Ibaihi, ihe meri na ya zande Ehubo. Oni meri ya bolunde Ehubo. What makes up Ehubo generally? Ah. Uh, the questions you are raising, there's a lot of um, connections. I think we will start with migration, how we came to be. Oral history tell us that the people, three main great, I mean, three movements, be historians yourself, the movement, movement, development, the settlement movement is not just one generation, it's not two, it's spread over a number of places. And the people migrate from one place to the other, along the way they keep on accumulating and uh, maybe having people joining them, having people died away. We're told that where we now call and know as Ehubu, anglicized Afibu, made up of three groups of people. The first set were the people they called the Ego group. The Ego group, they came and all of them were told, came from various parts of the world, from Eastern side and around the uh, Jewish countries, around Egypt and some from the West. But eventually when they did come, the Egos came and settled where we now look at as the north, northern part of this place. From here where we are, Amizu, is a part of where Ego settled, down to after Mata, then going towards our Meta area. That's why you get down there, you have Uhu Ego. Then here is Ubu Ego. They settled here. When they settled, and then Isunkalo, came in his own group and settled around uh, where you have the present uh, Noyankalo. So was the cross, the uh, cross was uh, where we call Otweke, or what is generally known now as Mdibe um, Beach. But the original name is Otweke, and then what Mdibe um, Beach came to be. So it's so Kalo settled there, uh, the present um, Noyankalo. The third one, who was a more fierce fighter, Igbo, a warlord, came after Ego and Isunkalo had settled. He came and found his own area around where we call um, Oroguro, near Amogulobo, in Pogoro group of villages. That Oroguro is still existing. Oroguro, near Amogulobo. That's where Ego, um, Igbo came in Buku, when he came there he settled. Since he was desired at that time, might was right. So he had to fight his way, he had to subdue the people he met to bring them under his fold. So eventually we're not going to go into the details of the war. But um, he, he first of all faced Ego and fought with them and got them scattered. Some ran down to Aziza, others ran to other places. And history tell me, and information tell us that where you have anything you have as um, Ishago, 
road yako, mkweko, all these things having ego and a support around the Bakelike area are supposed to be people who flee from this particular place mm -hmm. and stay there. After getting rid of uh, the egos, after subjugating the egos, then he turned over to uh, Isun Kalo. He also had to subjugate uh, Isun Kalo. And some of the Isun Kalo groups ran over to Amasere. And then when they, when they were looking, they said, Oh, I've been there, Amasere. They got there, and then uh, the other place, and some ran to other places. And eventually, I said to cut a very long story short. Sure. Sure. When he had subjugated all of them, then he said, all right, no more wars. We must make peace. And at that particular time, Igbo had a daughter called Orete Imomo, who was married to somebody in the Zuku Amizu. When they got settled there, then um, and uh, that Orete Imomo, was the daughter of Igbo. Mm -hmm. And she was the first woman, we understand, who performed Olariwe. Mm -hmm. And then it was through her too that we have Ori Amizu. It was through her we had this Ori Amizu. So when she settled there, and eventually, um, when they wanted to make peace, all right, uh, it was the, the people from Aegu, people from Isunkalo, you come, let us make peace. He chose Amizu first as a place the daughter was living. And then two, he looked at it at that time as being more central. Mm -hmm. From there, it was after that time, the meeting they were going to that Ama Izu arose as a group. This is a place where people from around this place come to meet. And until recently, that is a meeting place for all Ehubo up to today. They say, say who but wants to meet. If I'm talking of old Africa division, which includes where we call now, um, a boy south, the meeting place is here, the quarter. And in fact, it was at the quarter that the first pronouncement of a boy was made by Dr. Carnibian. So it has continued to be a, a place for, for, for general meeting for all people around this place. It was because they made peace and settled it at Togo Quarter. They dug what they called what they call a chapel. They had all the concoctions, bring this, bring this. They buried it down. If you go to Gamizu, there's one small effigy. Akpa is there occasionally. They dress it with in white. So that's where they buried the pot of peace in Amizu. That's the old water, and up to today, that the water remains the place. It was a place where peace was reunited in the whole of Ehub. Mm -hmm. That's why we have that. Is, but that. It was after that time now they said, okay, if you brought any customs with you or anything along with you, you may retain it, but know that you are living here in my name, Eha Ibu. It is that Eha Ibu that has metamorphosed into Ehubu. That's how we have Eha Ibu. You are living here in my name. So Eha Ibu turned to be Ehubu. That's how we inherited that. Perhaps you will know that about the late, late, late 60s or so, there were some archival, uh, archival findings by um, Hattel and, and uh, Kuching Ngozi at Zuku uh, Opa and then somewhere at the uh, Enriken and um, Uwego area to find out that 350 years before Christ was born, people were already living, settled in the Hubo. 3,500 years before Christ was born. That means over 5,000 years ago, people were already settled. That's why a Hubo race with them. Um, with Soka, Iji, and then uh, the other one in, uh, in, in uh, Anambra. So uh, that's how, briefly, how they got settled there to call uh, the settlement. And after that time, no more war, intertribal war within the Hubo, after having got the name Eha Hubo. So gradually, then, then they had to fashion out the, um, 
rotatory traditional, I mean traditional calendar, which goes on to talk of a K, Uri, and Ko, and so on. That's the most I can just say, roughly, how we came to be answering a Hubo. Okay, thank you, sir. So, considering the fact that you have explained Ihe Merini, Ainaz, and the Hubo, mm -hmm. what now brought about the tag Afibo people? Afibo, they you know ordinarily when strangers come or visitors, Afibo, they can't, they can't, the white man that I met, who, were, who taught us in primary school and the secondary schools, and we met as DOs and so on, they couldn't pronounce FKP because of the language thing. They, you can't get an, an English person talking of Ehubo, Eha, Ibo, Efibo. Even Eda up to today still refer to you as Ndafibo. Others uh, may call you Ndafibo, not even Afibo. It's a question of uh, cultural this thing, um, uh, what we call um, uh, provincialism in a, when you go people, the way people speak about certain things. Because you go around um, a number of area, they can't pronounce ruler. They say ruler. Ruler, up to today, they have to tell ruler. So that type of a thing is how people come. But the name is Eho Ibu, Eho Ibu. So all of other people is anglic anglicized. And then today, if you talk of other people, you are talking of two things. Either they uh, the, um, truncated, um, not truncated, but the misspelled or misspoken Afipo. Then the other one is local government area, Afipo. When you are thinking of Afipo local government, you are thinking of Akboha. I think of a master, I think of a man, I think of the men who have a few local government. Okay. That's how you talk about it. But if you talk of a who book, don't talk region. of a few. So that's just that about a few and then a who Okay. It's a corrupt one of all, but the main one is a who which is a uh, Igbo. So, who can we relate to? You see that he is the ancestral father of Ehubo. Well, is they are claimed you can, the one person we are claimed on top of Nasina You wouldn't say so okay. because before the Ibo came, people were already living here, mm -hmm. but he came and dominated. But now he has uh, conquered. It's a question of an acclaimed founder of Ehubo is Ibuku. The acclaimed one, because of power of hand, arms, he has to subdue, subdue them. And they said they, he brought them under the overlord of one name. Before then, there were only settlements. It was after the conquer of Ubu that this place called Ubu was ever known as a place. There were only settlements all over people. But there was not one, one name. So that's why every village has its own found, found, uh, founder. So when you talk of Ehubo as a whole, we always refer to Ibo Ibu as the acclaimed founder of Ehubo. Not that he accept, settled them, but he subdued them and then brought him under his fold. Wow. 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 Papa, thank you so much. Thank you. But again, if we go and you talked about how Emma um, the foreigners that came had influenced the pronunciation and how people know us so what other thing did the foreigners what else could be referred to as the western influence on the Ehubo people on how we do things on how we see ourselves generally uh, incidentally and this, i think 2002 when we were all members of the FIPO Today team, we went into some uh, uh, research and found out that by December 1902, I think about 28 or so, the white men overran Ehubo through Iyoka, leading to, after Ebiam, going towards Mwana, uh, Iyoka War, 1902. When they came, 
and conquered Egubu as a group. Then they came in and established their own government. When they arrived, at that particular time, the headquarters of this site was at uh, Obubra, and I think it did by Obubra in the Cross River. So they transferred it to Afipo. They call, they call it Afipo. They transferred it to that place and brought to this place. So it was called Afipo Division. Afipo Division included what we know as Old Afipo Division is what is recently called a boy South Senatorial okay. District. Where you play, every place where you call a boy South was the Old Afipo Division when we were in the primary school in the 1940s. We know Kumoro, I mean Abomege, Hosara, Ibo, Itigiti, Erei. We still we stay school together as Afriko Division, Old Afriko Division. So that's when they came now. When I'm talking about when you talk about the influence. So we have what we call the gains and pains of British colonization. One century of British occupation of Ehubu, what you have got, what you have lost. So that's, that's that when they came here to 1902, certainly they have influenced us in a number of ways. You can't just wave it, take it away by a wave of the hand. But they have certainly um, done, done that. And it was when they were already here, then about 1911 or 1913, 1911 stroke 1913, the Presbyterian CSM came at that particular as a church. Then 1914, they made an attempt to cut legs, made an attempt to settle at uh, St. Patrick's in Dibbe. But the custom frustrated them. Two years they ran away, cut legs. They come back more permanently in 1935 and established at uh, Ugokite at Ngodo, where you now call um, Ngoda Amaji Primary School. It was a burial ground for the other people. They gave them that place, they established the primary school. So that time they established, they were just, uh, I was just about uh, three, two, three years old when they established it. I'm told I was born in 1933. So when the Catholic Church came in 1935, so I was already here before they came. They established, that's the missionary. Missionaries were coming, the white people, the, um, the government, colonial masters were coming. All of them were white. Both the missionaries and the colonial masters were all white. So that's why we, we met them at that particular time. So the influence has been enormous. If we go to enumerate them, we take a whole day. So they certainly have uh, influenced uh, us. Like I said, one of these um, uh, book, um, volumes of Africa today contains the details of the British invasion of a uh, of Ehubu. And one book written by Raphael Sika. So he dealt in details about the British occupation of Ehubu from that 1902 till 1960, October, when they apparently left us. But they have still not completely left us <laughs> in so many ways. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate this. So, Ibu, just to wrap up what we have already discussed with you, what do you have to say to people who have lost touch of the roof? What, um, you say, what will I do? What, what you have to say to people who have lost touch of the root, considering that we are trying to bring back what we must have lost and information that is already slipping out of our hands. Uh, I will first of all appeal to the young ones who are growing to be interested in knowing your past. First, interest. It's not a question of dismissing it with a wave of the arm on the beach here on the uh, uh, old, uh, on the, uh, this is no longer their time. Then you sweep it out. But unfortunately, most of the people who say that have not gone, sometimes some of them haven't gone beyond the, a boy state 
or eastern region, not to talk of Nigeria, but they will be the people to condemn. But you go there, some of us who have had the opportunity of traveling outside this country, will know that in their own area, they still have things that are natural with them. When they want to build, if you go to the U.S., you have most of the towns under trees. But here, we begin by cutting down all the trees. Uh, that's being fetish. You damage all of them. Yet, most of the things we met here are now in some libraries in the U.S., in the U.K., and so on. So, if we develop interest, first of all, to know that those things mean something. If you get interested and wanting to go a little bit, whereby the grace of God, some of us who were nearer them are still alive. Maybe we can still get a little bit of it, but certainly we can never go down. Yes. We can never go sure. back there. Because I knew where you could not ride a bicycle up to this place. I was among the group who cut the road between here and the road and this, so that vehicles would pass the, 1958 we cleaned that one. There was no car that could get up to this way before 1958. There was no route. You have to left to right. From here to that place. So that's just it. So you can't uh, go all the hog. But certainly if you felt interest to know, let me find who I am, yeah. who my parents were, how they lived why they live that way if they get interested yes that's the one thing and two develop more interest in reading what others have written some of us cannot now read the um, I don't know the phone handset <laughs> has its own like uh, any coin it has bad and good spellings have gone no, was the SMS? Writing of essays, how do you people write it again? Because now it is a question of uh, if you want to write your Y O U, it is you. Okay, anybody can form his or her own abbreviation. It has no 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 no, no system. It's what you think about. How you use it, others will think that's not what yes, it is okay. and adopt it. So when they first of all get interested in knowing who they are making investigation, they will be on the right way to know some of the things that are that are, are very useful that we have lost. We have gained something quite all right. Like I said there are pains and gains. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've got some, call it civilization in good, but we have lost our culture, generally. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. You have heard it yourself. So whatever you decide to do with this information, you want me to say it's up to you, no. It's up to all of us. Take charge and connect back to the roots. Thank you. Okay. From the various parts of the world, from Eastern side around the Jewish countries, around Egypt, and south of the West. But eventually, when they did come,